For this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to work the sprinkle stitch. You'll need any type of yarn and the appropriately sized hook. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using a number four worsted weight yarn and a size I or five and a half millimeter hook. We'll want to get started with a simple slip knot. So I'm going to make a loop and then stick the long end through and pull. I'll insert my hook and snug that down. Not so it's super tight, but just, you know, so it's snug. To get started, you'll chain any multiple of two. So you'll chain two until the project is as wide or as long as you would like, depending on which way you're working the stitch. For this sample swatch, I'm going to chain 24. That should give me a project that's approximately seven inches wide for my sampler blanket. So four, five, six. So now I have 24 chains. I want to count back and insert my hook into the fifth chain from the hook. So this loop on the hook does not count. So we're going to count back one, two, three, four, five. And into this fifth chain, I'll insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. Into the very next stitch, I'll insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. And now I'll yarn over and pull through all three loops. This is a single crochet two together. For this stitch, I'll need to chain two now, and then we'll repeat. So once again, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Insert your hook into the following stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook, and then chain two. I'll be right back when I get to the end of this row. So I'm near the end of the first row. I have four stitches remaining. I'm going to go ahead and insert my hook into the next stitch and the following stitch. Yarn over, pull through all three, chain two. And then we should end with two stitches. So the last two stitches are worked the same. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop yarn over, pull through all three. And the only difference here is when we reach the end of the row, we want to chain three instead of chaining two. So we're going to chain three and turn. Row two is the repeat row. So what you're going to want to do is look in your work for this space where the single crochet is and then the chain space. So being able to identify the single crochet space and the chain space will help you with your work. So the next step is to go and repeat the single crochet two together, but this time we're going to insert our hook into the single crochet, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then insert our hook into this chain two space and yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through, all three, chain two, and then repeat that. Again, the first time you pull up a loop, it's in that single crochet space, and the second loop you pull up is in that chain space. Yarn over, pull through all three. I'll meet you back when I'm at the end of the row. So I've reached the end of the row, and I now have one single crochet left and the chain three space. So just as we've been doing, I'm going to pull up a loop in that single crochet and then pull up a loop in that chain three space. Yarn over, pull through all three. And then as with the first row, we're going to chain three because we're at the end of a row. So at the end of each row, you're chaining three, but otherwise throughout the project, you're chaining two. I'm going to turn my work and continue in this manner until the project is the size that I want. I'll meet you back in just a moment and I'll show you how we could change colors if we wanted to. But this is how our project's looking so far. This is a double-sided project, so it will look the same from the front and the back. 
once you continue working it up. So I've worked up a little bit of this project in the variegated yarn. And here you can kind of see why I call this the sprinkle stitch. You can see how when either you use variegated yarn or self-striping yarn, you get these little stitches that drop down and they look kind of like little sprinkles to me. Let's go ahead and change colors. So for this last stitch, I'm going to go ahead and pull up a loop in the single crochet, pull up a loop in the chain three space. And instead of yarning over and pulling through with my main color, I'm going to switch to my second color. So I wanna leave a long enough tail that I can weave in the ends. I'm gonna just kind of secure that behind my work, yarn over and pull through with the new color. And I'm going to chain three. And once I've chained three, then I can kind of pull on both colored ends to secure that down. At this time, I would cut the variegated yarn and continue on with the pink, making sure to leave a long enough tail to weave in the ends. Now you could carry the yarn up the, the edge, it, depending on how you're changing colors. However, the way that we're going to work the border is going to utilize these chain threes. And if you're doing that, it makes it a little bit harder to hide the yarn if you're carrying up the edge. But that would be completely up to you. Now that I've joined my second color, I'm going to go ahead and turn, and then we would just continue working the pattern as we had before in the new color. So there we go. Once you've weaved in your ends, we can go ahead and edge the project. I'm going to edge this in a contrasting color just so that you can see how it's done, but you could edge it in any color that you like. With my edging color, I'm going to form a slip knot, and then I'm going to start by single crocheting in any chain two space at the top of my work. So when insert, pull up a loop, single crochet, now chain three and single crochet into the next chain two space. Chain three, single crochet into the next chain two space. We'll repeat that until we get to the corner. Here's where I've weaved in my ends so it's a little bit thicker here, but I'm still gonna get in there chain three. And now here's the last chain two space before my corner. So I'm going to single crochet, chain three, loop around this corner, and you can kind of see there's a bar here. And just above that bar is a space. And I'm going to place my single crochet right in there. Chain three. And now when you're working down the sides, you can use those bars as kind of a guide for where to place your single crochet. So on the side down, I'm going to place it just above the bar as we work around. Again, I can see here. And that space above the bar is where our chain three would have gone when we did our turning chain. So we're back at the next corner or near the next corner. And this time it's not as simple to get around. So I'm going to go ahead and place my single crochet just in front of this bar here. and then chain three and again turn and now we're at the bottom of the project and so I'm still have some chain spaces in here but I'm going to try to get into this corner here there we go and then chain three 
and then skip over this space and in the space so here's our single crochet here's our chain two space go ahead and single crochet into there single crochet chain three and this is really nice because the edging works up in inside the spaces so it's a little bit easy easier than than edging some stitches one thing to note is even though I'm using a chain three here it does kind of form a little bit of a baby ruffle so that could be your border as it is or you could work a nice shell into it or whatever you would like but if you wanted this to be tighter you could do a chain two instead of a chain three and that would work just as well if I were going to place a more solid border with let's say single crochets or half double crochets around, what I would do is do this edging first with a chain two, and then I would come around again and do a single crochet into the single crochet from this edging row, two single crochets in the middle, and a single crochet here, and then I would work out from there. But again, you can do it any way you like. I'm going to continue on until we come back to where we started. So here I'm back where we started and all that I need to do is chain three and then join with a slip stitch to this first single crochet. So I'm just going to insert my hook into that single crochet under both loops, yarn over and just pull through. And then I can go ahead and cut my yarn and end off. Now, if you wanted to continue on in the same color, for example, if you wanted to do a granny stitch, you could just chain up three, do two double crochets in this stitch and work your border pattern however you like. So like you could do, um, here I did a granny cluster, chain one, and another granny cluster. And you could really just do anything you like so that's a granny stitch you could do you could also do a shell by just placing let's say seven double crochets in here you could probably fit seven but let's do five five and then I'm going to single crochet down here Oops. Single crochet here and then place five in the next And that's how you could work a shell border as well. So you definitely have some options with edging this. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please be sure to give this video a like and hit the subscribe button if you like to see more tutorials like this one.